Okay guys, we're back. Today we're going to talk about the repowering of my boat, of the old Show Water Flats boat. So, long before I broke down in the flats last year, last May of 2023, that um, I was already looking at going to repower the boat. So I've been looking for a while. So these are just some Facebook Marketplace posts that I've been looking at and we're thinking that hey this might be a fit for my boat so that yamaha there is a 115 same size here's another yamaha which is a 150 a little bit bigger because like i said the mercury 115 that i have on the back is a 2006 four stroke and it weighs 488 pounds so it performs relatively good out there in the flats um it's not no speed demon but it, I mean, it takes care of business. So I was thinking maybe the same size, a little bit bigger, but I don't want to go too big. So look, here's a Mercury 225 Optimax. That's a two-stroke engine. So it's going to be a little heavier, but it's not going to be as heavy as a four-stroke because it's a two-stroke. So that was that might be a possibility too. That I go back to a two-stroke motor. To try to you know drop a little bit of weight here's another uh, Yamaha F series so this one here too is a possibility and um, Yamaha puts out a good motor I think the two best top motors probably right now is you know Yamaha and Mercury Here's an Avenue G2 series. I was impressed with this when they first came out. Yeah, how they totally re-engineered it. The torque that these would put out. But they just have too many issues. The design flaws in them. Um, I think where Avenue... Because, you know, they went bankrupt. So they, the biggest mistake they ever made is putting a 10-year warranty on, on these motors. Because it put them into bankruptcy. And they're no longer in business. Here, Here's a show now. The show, what I really like about the show is it has low end torque. You know, the Mercury may beat it on the high end, but on the low end, the show has better torque. And in the skinny, that's what you want. You want torque. You know, speed, eh, not, not so much, but torque, yes. Here's an original Johnson. That's what was originally on my boat is a 140 Johnson. So I even thought about going back super old school to a two-stroke. And I was thinking about this one and hanging this back on the back of the of the old show water. And just go back to the plain Jane of yesteryear's two-stroke motor where it sucked the gas. Here's a G1 series Evinrood. Um, they're pretty good they're okay I, I i you know they're a lot better than the g2 they don't have as many problems as the g2 let's put it this way the g2 probably has more torque and more technology behind it than the g1 but the g1 is still a fairly solid motor but the problem with those is being able to eventually in the future get parts for them and finding somebody that's going to want to work on them because evan Rue went out of business Here's another one. This is another G1 200, just like the one that was in the picture before it. Um, I did think about these. So I was considering one of those for the back of the boat. Um, here's an old style Johnson, 200 horsepower. This is before uh, Johnson went out of business. And uh, then I forget BRP bought up the company name, which was... Uh, uh, OMC, which made Johnson and Evinrude, and then the 86 to Johnson line. Uh, Johnson used to be a pretty good motor, so this was an old school motor. Like I said, I was toying with the thought maybe going old school. Here's a little bit older uh, Mercury 05 than the 06 model that I have on mine. It's uh, 125 horsepower, so it's only 10 more horsepower than the one that I actually have on the back right now. So I, it wouldn't add really relatively hardly any more weight, if any at all. And I get a little bit more horsepower. And kind of staying in that same frame that I'm at now, which I know where I'm at. Here's a 225 Mercury. And this one's a four-stroke. So this one's going to be a little bit heavier. And it's a 2020 model. So I did think that, hey, maybe 
this might have uh, potential for the old show water. And, I mean, you can't beat the price. Look at the price on it. So, it had low hours. Here's another Mercury 115. So, this is a newer model. This is a 2014 Mercury. So, it would be exactly the same as the one that I already have on my boat, except just newer. And nothing would change. It would still perform the same, get up the same, do everything the same. So, there's no unknown variable in that if I would hang this kind of motor back on the back of the boat. And what do we got here? This is another Mercury. This is a Verado Pro, 200 horse. So, uh, the problem here with this one is the weight. Uh, I hear they're relatively good engines. Uh, the only issues that you really have with these is the supercharger on them and that they're not very fuel efficient. So, they suck a lot of gas. Even though they're a four-stroke, they're still pretty thirsty. They drink like a two-stroke. Here's another Pro, uh, Mercury Pro XS. Um, and it's a two stroke, 250 horsepower. So I thought about this. Yeah, it's a lot of horsepower, but it's not going to be as heavy as its four stroke counterpart. So it's going to be a lot lighter. So that, you know, is a possibility too. Another Pro XS Mercury, but I want to say this one's a 25 inch, uh, skag on it. So it's not going to work for me. I need one for a 20 inch transom, so it's got to be 20 inches. Let's see, what's the next one that we got coming up here? So, that one, I mean, yeah, it's clean, but like I say, I need a 20 inch. Here it is again, but I believe it's a 25, I think. I could be wrong, but what I recall, that's the reason why it was, uh, you know, taken off the list. For a possible motor for the back of the old shoal water. But what else do we have here? Let's see, what's this next one? Now, here is a, another Mercury Pro XS, and this one has the Torque Master, I believe, lower unit on it. So this has potential. And it's a 2014 model, 225 horsepower. So that one too. What well, the advantage with with Mercury for me is I already have Mercury controls, so that would flip right over. Oh, here, here's a show Yamaha show. So what I like about the Yamaha is what I like is I like the low end torque. Um, this is a really good candidate. I mean, the problem though, the downside to this motor is the weight. That motor there weighs five hundred and sixty some odd pounds. And here we go. Here's a G2, 300 horsepower. Look how cheap they're selling that one for. You know, thought about putting 300 horsepower on the back. That's really way too much engine, what I need. And on top of that, like I said, there are so many problems because those are fly-by-wire engines. Uh, there's so many problems with those engines. Um, to the steering, uh, Teflon gears getting stripped and just issues after issue after issue. Here's an here's an older uh, V Max Yamaha before before they became the show. I think these are the HP DIs. Uh, very good solid motor. You can't really beat them. They're they're good workhorses, uh, but they're not very fuel efficient. But like I say, they're very reliable. And here's another G2. Look at the price. Selling it cheap. That motor was over twenty thousand dollars, brand new. And look, they can't even get a fraction. This is barely a fraction of the cost of it. Because just the known issues that are with them. Once you start having problems with them, you have problems. And then finding parts for them. And then on top of that, uh, finding somebody who's going to want to work on them. Here's an old style Mercury Pro XS. Two stroke. This is a racing engine. So I did think about this one going back two stroke. But it's, this one doesn't have very good fuel economy because it's designed for speed. But it looks pretty cool, the, the yellow and black, you know. I mean, that's pretty cool how they did that. But I did consider this one, too. What's the next one? Okay, this one. This one's an HO, 200 horsepower. HO G1. Um, I could get that motor for that price there and then another $1,600 um, 
they the same dealership there, marine shop there, would install it on the back of my boat. That's what he threw out there. But then again, I went back to weight. That motor weighs 500 something pounds. So it's all about weight. Here's a Honda that's pretty close, relatively close to me, that's down here in Port Isabel, just down the road. Low hours. I, um, I, I don't know much about Honda, but I think they're pretty good motors from just what I've read. But I think where their issue is, is the getting up. They don't have really good low end torque, but other than that, they're good solid motors. Very reliable. Very reliable. Here's another Mercury. You know, and uh, this Mercury here is a 150, so I'd be getting a little bit more horsepower than my 115. Not by adding a whole lot of amount, more weight, another 40, 50 pounds or whatever on the back. And um, and it should perform pretty good. Here is an F uh, series uh, Yamaha. So I think this is a 200. So that the F series is a pretty good solid line that Yamaha puts out overall. It's a good solid motor. Virtually, as long as you maintain it, it's they run, you know, for a good long time. Um, but I need to look at something that got torque. So that's why you keep seeing these Pro X XS's come up because the Pro XX has the torque in it, and uh, especially if it's got that Torque Master uh, lower end unit on it, that just solidifies the deal on those. And like I say, it makes it easy for me to do the transition because I already have the wiring harness and I already have the cables and controls for Mercury. Now, here's an old style Yamaha uh, 200 horsepower OX66. Now, I wanted this one. This is the one that I was going to drop the hammer on. It was in Austin, but I couldn't get the time off to go get it, and they sold it to somebody else. It was thirty-five hundred bucks. Look how clean that motor is. Never been in the salt water. Low hours and an extra thousand. He'd throw the trailer in, but I didn't get it. So here's another Pro X. It didn't. That, that one didn't work out for me. So this one's a clean motor, but the problem with it, I believe this one's a twenty-five inch shaft on it, so it's too big for what I need out there in the flats. I need a twenty-inch because I got a twenty-inch transom on the back of my boat, and I fish the skinny, so it needs to be as short as possible for the skinny water. And here we go. Here's another G1 series E Tech, one seventy-five horsepower. So, like I told you, the boat I used to ride around on, that was my brother's buddy, he had a Johnson 175 on the back of his old shoal water. And I remember how that thing used to just perform really good out there, you know, with that 175 on the back. So, that's why I was towing with that one. Here's a Suzuki. So, we got a Suzuki here. Suzuki's are okay motors. Um, back in the day, they used to be super, I mean, right up there with the Omaha. Um... I, they're still pretty good, but I just think that from what I've read on the forms that you got to watch with the corrosion on the inside of the motor and on the corrosion on the bolts and stuff that they don't use high quality bolts. So it becomes an issue later down the line. In the beginning, they're good, but later on, if you notice, people are unloading them because of, there's issues. And here's another Yamaha F-Series. Uh, like I say, still a pretty good solid motor, but then again... That size of motor, I come back and I think, okay, wait. You're adding another 200 and something pounds on the back. So, I'd have to think. Now, this was a contender. I like that 150. And see how it's got that torque master? It's got that good low-end torque on the back on this Pro XS. And it just looks like they didn't really take care of this motor. That's why I passed on this one. Because it's a fairly new motor. They want almost $10,000 for it. But just look at it. It doesn't look like it's clean at all. So it, it just tells me they weren't doing the maintenance. Here's one that I sat on for a while. Um, this one really looks good. And I almost bought this motor. And it's a 2011 Verado. And it's the perfect size. It's clean. It only had like 117 hours on it. Um, but. The downside was when I was reading up on them is, one, they're not fuel efficient. And two, uh, sometimes you have issues with the superchargers on them. So, uh, but other than that, they're a pretty solid motor. 
but uh, but that's their two biggest things. Well, definitely, it, since it has a supercharger, it gets the very poor fuel mileage. You know, just as bad as a two-stroke, if not worse than an old-style two-stroke. Two but beautiful motor. Here's another one. This one's another. This is one that I had. This is the one I have on the back of the boat. So I found another 2006 uh, 115 Mercury four-stroke, and this guy never replied to me. I sent him text after text through Marketplace. Never replied. Had it up for sale. And he never replied. So it never went anywhere. Here is a G2 115 Evinrude. So it'd be about the same weight as the one that I have on the back. Same horsepower. But just a two stroke. So it might be a little bit lighter. Because it's a two stroke. But then again, I started thinking, okay, all the issues that they have with the G2s, I don't need the headaches. My whole deal of doing this is to put a motor on the back that I don't have to worry in the back of my mind when I put in at the dock if I'm going to make it back or if I'm going to be <laughs> stranded out there because I've been stranded three times and that's three times too many. So what I pick, I need to pick something that's going to be reliable and it's going to be reliable for a long time. So here's another F-Series uh, Yamaha. You can't really go wrong with those. Those are pretty good motors. And there we are, another G2. So that ought to show you. And just look at the prices on those G2s, man. You're getting big horsepower for pennies on the dollars. So that ought to tell you there's an issue with these motors. Um... I mean, they're beautiful looking motors, beautiful design, but, uh, I mean, they bankrupt the company. They put a 10 year warranty on them and that's a 300 horsepower, man. And they can't, uh, it, it, it put them in bankruptcy trying to honor all the warranties and all the issues that they had on those motors. So, so that, so that's a no for me. I'm not going to do a, a G series motor. Because one, I'm probably not going to be able to get parts for it in the near future. And then two, I'm probably not going to be able to find anybody that's going to be able to work on it when I can't figure out what's wrong with it. And then how they always keep breaking down, whether it's the power head or whether it's the uh, the gears. I mean, they, they have issues. Here we are again. That's that 150 again that's down in Port Isabel. I looked at it again and I thought about, hey, you know, it's not going to weigh much more than my 115 and the price is right and it only has like a hundred hours or a little bit over a hundred hours on it looks pretty clean uh the only downside that why i did not choose that one was because of the uh the low end torque and here of course of vmax this one is a really good candidate i like this one 2017 vmax low torque high end torque on uh, on the bottom end so you can get up real fast, get on top real fast. That's what I'm looking for. Look how clean that motor is. Beautiful motor. And the only issue there is the weight. I go back to the weight. I I stew in it and I think about it. That's a 250, man. And imagine I think my, that old show water would fly with that big old motor on the back. But how is it going to perform in the skinny? I mean, yeah, it's probably a big enough motor that I can blow a hole in anything and get up. But, you know, is it going to balance right? So, so I passed on that one. Here's a Suzuki. I started thinking about Suzuki. Suzuki is, like I said, a good motor. But then I, when I read up on them, they have a lot of corrosion issues that they corrode real fast. So, um, they're in the salt water. And we have a hypersaline uh environment down here in the lower Laguna Madre. Here's another Evanry. This is a 150 G1 series. And the G1 series is pretty good, but if you're going to get one, I would think the HO, which is the bigger block, the bigger uh, piston bore, would be the one to get. But this is a pretty clean motor. This guy's kept it clean, but it makes me wonder, why is he getting rid of it? You know what I mean? Because he's probably going to repower it with a Yamaha or a Mercury. So <laughs> that ought to tell you right there. You know, the two big players right now is going to... Well, the biggest player is by far Mercury. Mercury is the biggest uh, outboard motor in the world. And then uh, I put Mercury and Yamaha right on the same plane. And then I'd probably put Suzuki and Honda just right below them. And then Tohatsu and then so on down the line, you know. 
This is an older style VMAX. H, uh, what is it, HPDI or HDPI or whatever it's called. And look how clean that is. So I thought about this one. But the weight, because how big the motor is. It's a heavy motor. So I thought about it. But uh, I had to pass on that one because, just because of the weight. Look, it's clean. Uh, they're not very fuel efficient. But look how clean that motor is. Immaculate. Never been in the salt water. That's a good clean motor. And it'd make a good motor on the boat. But since I can't carry a lot of fuel, um, I need something that's more fuel efficient. And the weight. So that's why I had to pass on that one. But still, that's a clean motor. There it is again. Just a different angle from it. Yeah, it was a potential, but like I said, I had to pass. And we're back to the G1 Series Evinrude. So I went back and I thought about, oh, what about this one? You know, it's a, I think this one's a 150. So it's not going to add much more weight. And, you know, it should sit about the same in the water. It should get up about the same because it's only going to be about, you know, 40, 50, maybe 60 pounds heavier. But then I started thinking, you know, down the road, since Evan Root's out of business and it went bankrupt, once the parts run out, they run out and then try to find somebody to work on it. It's going to get expensive. So I passed on this one too. And let's see what the next one is that's coming up here is another Suzuki. So this is a 200 horsepower Suzuki. So I thought about this one too. This one's going to weigh, out of all the outboards, I want to say Suzuki weighs the last on their bigger engines. Oh, but look at this one. Then I came across this one. This is a Yamaha 175 Show Max. Look how beautiful that motor is. Look at that. You get the low end torque that you're looking for. You get the high output on the upper end. All around good motor. You know, show max. Look at that beautiful motor. Very clean. Never been in the salt water. Super, super low hours. I mean, I think that motor only had, had, when I talked to him, I think it only had like 30 hours on it, if even that. Super clean. It was on a pontoon that was sold to a customer at this marine shop or marine dealership. And it didn't give enough power because the pontoon was a 23-foot pontoon. So the customer brought it back and put a 250 show on it, you know. And they had this one up for sale. Very beautiful motor. Very clean. And that motor would look perfect on the back of the old show water. So, which one did I choose? Well, I guess we're going to have to take a look and see. Okay, guys, we're back. Um, we're here at the FedEx place. And uh, Mercedes is waiting for him to bring us the motor. That I'm going to put on the back of the boat. Yep. Came in, I had to come up here to pick it up. Let me flip it around. It's a huge place. I never even knew this place was out here. They said they've been here five years. Let's see you can see it. Huge terminal out here. Big old compound. Look at the size, look at the size of that uh, generator. Yeah, it's a huge generator. So, so we're just waiting for them to get it and bring it out here and load it in the back of the trailer. But yeah, um, 
Just a kind of little uh, update to let you know. I've been looking online for a while. I mean, for a good while for a motor. Even, even before I uh, broke down out there in the sand flats, I was already, you know, looking around for um, for a replacement motor because I knew, you know, that the I'm kind of at the end of the lifespan on that old uh, Mercury 115. Which doesn't mean that I'm going to throw it away because I got plans for it for another restoration project, um, which is further on down the road for another boat. But um, but for the show water, um, I want a little bit more horsepower, but then I don't want too much because I fish the shallow flats, so I don't uh, want to uh, I don't want to put too much weight on it. So I had to make a decision, do I go with super big horsepower or do I just go with a little bit more than what I had? Because one thing about that 115, it worked pretty good out there in the flats. It's not real heavy, it was only 388 pounds and um, it worked really well getting up in the shallows. I mean, it wasn't no speed demon, you know, which I don't really ride fast anyway. I don't like riding really super fast out there anyway especially in a flats boat you know um it can get dangerous um but uh but i definitely knew that i needed to uh, to repower at some point just like the trailer i knew i was going to have to update the trailer at some point it was going to have to get uh repaired and updated to keep it for a good long time because like i'm telling you i got i have no plans of selling the boat i mean um it works beautiful out there in, in the flats. It's a flats boat, it's built for the flats, and it works perfectly. Granted, it may not be the smoothest ride in the world when you're going across the, the bay where the chop is, but it's a flats boat, man. That's what's to be expected. But when it gets in the flats, boy, it performs beautifully. It does what it's supposed to be doing, and, that, and that's what it's intended to do. It's intended to get you to the skinny water Get up in the skinny water and, you know, chase the reds down out there in the skinny water. So, I looked for a long time online. Um, looked at, I don't know, hundreds of motors. Used ones, you know. Um, I even thought about buying a new one. I, as a matter of fact, I was almost committed to getting a brand new uh, uh, show uh, from uh, from Yamaha over here at the Sportsman in San Benito. I went in, talked to him. Um, I, I was really committed to doing that. And then I just so happened, you know, one time here just uh, about a month ago, I was uh, looking online because, you know, I have an old 71 truck that I'm restoring and I was looking for parts. And I was searching this state for parts you know for my for my old truck and it just so happens this one popped up and it was out of uh wisconsin in wisconsin and i was looking for my 71 parts for my 71 chevy and it just happened to come up in my search engine when i was searching for the uh the um uh, the parts for my old chevy and that's how i came across it just out of the blue i wasn't really even looking that day i wasn't even looking for it and uh, I was looking for something else and it came up. Before, I was searching, 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 looking for an engine. And there were a few that I came across that were plausible, but then, you know, uh, they were used in the salt water. So, and, and it was just kind of like, like it would only have like a hundred hours and it has a brand new power head. So that's kind of, that's kind of a, a red flag if it's a brand new engine and they've already put a power head on it that there's a problem there. You know what I mean? Um, you know, sell 180 hours, new power head. Just got a fresh new power head put on it. You know, a lot of them I found were under 200 hours, but they had new power heads that had zero hours or 10 hours or whatever. So that's telling me that there were issues, you know, with that motor and that's why they're selling it because they repowered with something else and they're going to, um, you know, go a different route. And so they want to unload that on somebody else. 
But I'm gonna make a video. I'll make a video. I'll probably put this in the same video too with it. You know, we'll put it in the beginning and then we'll go through the motors that I looked through online. And uh, this is just another step in the process of getting back to drift fishing out there on the lower of the Madre. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit longer. I'm not planning on being in the water until sometime in the spring next year now. I, I did say fall, but I apologize for it. I mean, it's extended over because now that I found the motor, I'm going to, I'm going to just, uh, uh, redo the whole thing, don't have any issues, and it'll be good for a, a long time to come. And, um, we'll see, we're sitting here, we're waiting, we're supposed to roll it out down this ramp right here, on a forklift, and load it in the back of the little trailer that I got here. Uh, what else, what else? Um, but yeah, that's where it sits. I'm excited. You know, of course, I'd like to do everything like right now, but uh, and have it going and be back on the water like right now. But it, it's going to take time because, like I say, I got very limited, limited time to spend on this, and I just chip away here, chip away there. Um, I should be able to finish up the boat trailer here in the, by next week. I um, I want to say I should have it pretty pretty much almost sewn up, ready to go. And that way I can get the boat back on there and then start, uh, take the engine off, start doing the body work, all that stuff um, on it. Because then the next stage will be the body work. The motor is just going to sit. It's going to sit on the trailer. I'm going to park it under the shed and it'll sit there until I'm ready to uh, to put it on. But when I came across the deal, I had to, I had to pull the trigger. If not, somebody else is going to buy it. So I needed to... Uh, to go ahead and uh, and get it and just sit on it until I'm ready to install it. I'm not ready to install it on the back of the boat just yet. But yeah, excited. Trailer's coming along, got a new boat engine. All, right, all my controls came in. They came in uh, yesterday. Yeah, I think it was yesterday. They came in. No, day before yesterday. So I got all the, the controls, uh, the wiring harness, all that all new um, I got to see what kind of modification I got to make on my uh, console to make it work since it's a new engine it doesn't use the analog gauges anymore it uses a digital gauge it's just one gauge so I don't know I'm gonna have to figure something out with my little panel that, that bolts out that I have all those gauges in because all those gauges are no longer gonna get used so that's a uh, that's something too that I got to look at. See if I can make another uh, our goal and have somebody manufacture me another uh, 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 dash plate because it's not flat. Mine has a curve in it. It, it, it it's flat and then it curves up, and uh, so that's gonna have to be made. That's something I that I can't do unless I just fiberglass a flat face in there, raise it a little higher. But then again, I don't know, it might uh, be too close to the steering wheel. Just something I'm gonna have to look at. And here it comes. Here, so let's take a look. First look at what motor I bought for the boat. Beautiful. Is there, is there any way you can pick that up? from the side and slide it in there. Here, let me move the cables off the back so they're not in the way of the lights.
So I'm thinking you set the head right here and then can you pick it and then push it in there? Yeah, you know what I mean? Just like on this one side there where that board is, how does that work? So there it is guys. It's a 175 show Yamaha. Show max. Looks a lot bigger than it did in the in the ad. Perfect. Now, let me get a block of wood. I'll put it here, and then when you set it down, it'll set on the wood, and then you can get your forks, pick it up, and slide it in. You know what I mean? Give me one moment here. And we'll just put it this way. And then you can just get your forks, pick it up, and, and now remove the wood. Set it down. Oh, wait. There you go. Perfect. You just come around here. And then. You only move your forks. Oh, they're hydraulic. And that's nice. I wish we had those kind of forklifts at work. That's, we got a Toyota, but it doesn't have hydraulic move-in forks like that. And once you pick it up, I'll get the block out of your way. All right, let me get your paperwork. All right, you want to move the block? Perfect, you're good. Go on, you got it. It's good. You're good. I'm not gonna hurt that old trailer. It's it's taking a beating it's its life. So So if you just set it down, will it let you slide out? If not, I can put the block back in so you can get it out. Yeah, it's going to let you slide out. You're good. And now, can you just push it forward a little more? Man, I like that forklift, man. That's not, it's electric though, right? That's good. Right there. Thank you. Looks, looks good. Sure. Go ahead, Now, one on the following page. Alright, 
Appreciate it. I've been waiting on this. What out for repair or something? Or um, I'm replacing it, the motor on my boat. Oh, okay. So that's uh, one I found online. Oh, nice. Uh, I'm, I'm upgrading. You know, my, my boat motor is like a 2006. So this is a 2023 20, or something. Oh, wow. Yeah, brand new motor. So. What does that run? Um, actually, I got a good deal. Brand new? They're about nineteen thousand. Wow. I got it for just under twelve thousand dollars online. Yeah. It only has thirty hours on it. it so not even broke in. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. You have a good day. And they'll just let me out right when I go to the gate. It automatically open. open it out. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. I'm gonna take a few minutes to strap it up, and then I'll be on my way. So there it is. Beautiful. Nice and clean. Thing looks good. No cracks. No shipping. No scratches on it. It's perfect. And it's a 20 inch uh, lower unit just like what's on with what I got on the boat too. So it's the perfect size to fit right on the back. The old show water should perform really well with that. And it only weighs 117 more pounds than the engine I have on there right now. So that was another reason why I went with the 175 Max. Because the 200, which is the entry level uh, V6, this is, the, this is the biggest V4 you can get. And then the next size up is a V6. Um, that one was another 200 pounds in weight. So I, uh, I was concerned about weight since I fished the skinny. So we'll see what the difference is, adding an extra 117 pounds in the back of the transom, and we'll see how it performs out there in the skinny water. I think, I think I should be pretty close to where I was. We'll see, but it should perform really well. So let me get it all buttoned up and get on the road, because I gotta go to work. All right, we'll talk to you guys later.